These photos were also released by the palace today to mark the occasion. And what I think is really noticeable about Prince Edward is, despite his profile, he has mostly managed to steer clear of controversy. He served the family, he stayed happily married, he's raised a couple of great kids, and his wife, Princess Sophie, uh, she had this tribute for him this week. My husband never seeks compliments for himself. So when acknowledgement has come his way, it has always been a total surprise to him which is why I am grateful for this chance to, for once, be able to publicly celebrate and compliment him. And I am so proud of the man he is. He is the best of fathers, the most loving of husbands, and is still my best friend. So here's to you, my darling Edward. And may I, along with all of your family and so many friends and so many others, wish you the happiest of birthdays. Now, the Prince was understandably quite emotional uh, with that tribute, and and Edward has always been less public, a bit more a bit more stable, less glitz, less glam, but also less train wrecks. Uh, Louise, your brief thoughts on the part that Edward plays in the royal family? Oh, significant part. I think he's very much in the Princess Anne mould and the fact that he sort of gets on with it. And I thought it was lovely that Sophie described him in, in actually. The, most, the highest of gold standard terms as an iceberg and not to sort of suggest that he was some sort of crisis about to happen but more that what you see on the top with Edward is just the very tip of the good work and the stability and the love and the care and the just a general sort of good naturedness that he displays in the background which the general public don't really see and probably a lot of the royal family themselves don't see. He's been in, in sort of a kind of a situation where he's been overshadowed by his older siblings his entire life, in a way. I mean, the controversies of Andrew and even King Charles in the early days with Camilla. But I think that he, he sort of... He's sort of had his own path and he's got a very happy marriage and two beautiful kids and he's got the respect of the royal family and the respect of the general public. So I think um, Sophie's words were absolutely spot on. And Gemma, just quickly on that, you know, we know the royal family is different from any other family, but the fact that he does have those great points of connectivity uh, as far as his own marriage and family goes, that there is definitely something that I think, um, you know, allows the general public uh, to, to have that moment of connection with the royal family. This is desperately normal. And isn't it refreshing to have someone desperately normal and, as you said, scandal-free? And it was well reported before her passing that the Queen had a, a beautiful connection with Sophie, uh, that she loved the fact that she just got on with it. She worked her backside off and was just, you know, no nonsense. I, I look at them and think, yeah, they're just freakishly normal, if you can use that description. Um, nothing to see, scandal-free, just getting on with it. I mean, his younger days... Prince Edward, I'm, I'm old enough to remember Prince Edward when he tried to um, establish his own drama company and his own production company and they were sort of like varying levels of success-ish, if that makes sense, but he was out there having a crack and he did it quietly and he did it without being, you know, involved in any kind of scandal and you sort of felt a little bit sorry for him because he was kind of like the geeky youngest kid. And then he met Sophie and they were kind of <laughs> geeky and cute together and now they've, they've just got this, like I said, this vanilla family that most people would be able to relate to, I'm sure. Yeah, I think so. Now, Louise, Harry's US visa application is back in the news again. A couple of weeks ago, even Donald Trump had something to say about it. And in a new development, it looks like those documents will be made public. What's transpired since? Well, this is the visa issue that will not go away for Harry, mainly born out of the fact of the boasts that he made in his own autobiography about taking drugs. Of course, that's a big no-no if you're trying to get, you know, to be settled as a uh, with a visa or whatever it's a legal situation you'd think of in the UK. So, and a lobby group in, um, sorry, in the US, a lobby group in the UK have really, have like, have got the bit between their teeth. They want this paperwork out there. They want to know whether Harry has said yes or no to drug taking either now or in the past as well. And what's happened this week is a US judge has sort of thrown out um, an argument from the American government that this would invade Harry's privacy if this paperwork were to be made public. The judge has said, well, that doesn't actually hold water, so please release it. So whether this does happen, who knows? I get the feeling there's a lot of back-channeling going on here between the UK and US governments to sort of protect Harry, and who knows what he wrote on the form. I will add, though, that even if you do um, sort of claim to take drugs, 
in your autobiography. There's no proof, of course, of this. And also, um, you can get a waiver. There are ways around this, particularly if you're um, related to the king.